OTB AM is brought to you by Gillette. Good morning. Start with Gillette. Put your best face forward with our new and improved razors. Uh, Sarah Durvin is with us. She is the captain of the Galway All-Ireland winning Camogie team. Another All-Ireland winner. This is uh, a, a morning for luxuriating in glory. Sarah, how are you getting on this morning? Not too bad, guys. Not too bad. Um, delighted. Uh, woke up with the biggest smile on my face this morning. And um, to even hear Galway All-Ireland champions. Um, it, it's a dream come true. Where are you guys? Did you guys go straight home after the game last night? Was there a, a homecoming in Galway? No, no. We stayed up, um, just family and ourselves. Um, we stayed up in Dublin in the Carrollton Hotel. Very good. So the homecoming is today. You've got all that to look forward to as well. Can you just take us back to the game itself? Because um, you started really well and then Cork roared back and with a couple of minutes left to go, it's still in the melting pot. So you had to finish really strong. When when are you comfortable in the match? Is it literally at the full-time whistle where you're like, okay, that's over? Or um, I think it was, for me, it was seeing Orna McGrath put the ball over the bar at the 63rd minute. I think it was 63.05. And I was like, put it up three points. And I just said, we actually we have it. We actually have it. Um, and then the final whistle blew and it was just unbelievable. Um, unbelievable scenes. Um, girls coming off the bench running onto the pitch was just uh, unreal um, but that was the moment I was I finally went okay yeah we have it so the very last seconds essentially <laughs> <laughs> you can never take it for granted <laughs> no no comfort in a game against a side who obviously are you know littered with All-Ireland winners and who are coming making a getting back to the level that they were at when they were All-Ireland champions so you didn't have it easy you didn't have it easy in the semi-finals either it's been one of those years where you've had to fight for every single uh, success along the way which I guess makes you better game after game after game is that right? Yeah like I suppose we played Cork in the league um, semi-final and they brought us extra time and I suppose that day we kind of said you know as, as you said never say die attitude we just said we'd go and we we took the game to Cork and came out the right side of it then it kind of went into the championship then um, and we, it, the same thing kind of with Kenny we Becca Kinney in the dying seconds there was a couple of goal um, opportunities that they didn't get and, and that was down to the work rate of our girls and our forwards and Ada Schreiner got a vital hook in the last second in that game for us to win it by a point and I suppose against Tip then they threw everything at us and we still stood firm and um, I, I think that all kind of stood to us in our mentality and when Cork got that goal you know it was all down to how we were going to react from that and thankfully we reacted so positively and, you know, we dug deep and we grounded out that win and got the next few scores, which just sealed the deal for us. Sarah, Galway have obviously had their fair share of heartbreak when it comes to Camogie All-Ireland Finals. How much did that pain motivate you and how much does it make this all the sweeter this morning? Yeah, like, I have to say this is a sweet one, um, absolutely. You know, especially from last year and um, you know like that the game was in the melting pot until the 54th minute and there was a penalty then and it, the next thing the game was over and it was gone and the O'Duffy was going to Kilkenny and I suppose when we went back this year our goal was to get back to an All-Ireland final and um, you know we worked hard we trained hard and you know we hit the ground running then when the, when the ball was thrown in and it was just unbelievable um, amazing and just such a great feeling to wake up this morning in the All Ireland Champion. The the semi final performance was a bit patchy, and and I guess you came in for some criticism about the, whether or not you were getting back to the level that you'd need to be to win All Ireland. And then the first ten minutes, five points on the board. So obviously, the importance of the start and making sure that the the good start was there and the quality of play in that first ten minutes was a, a real sign that everybody was actually bringing their game face. What was the what was the dressing room like after the semi-final and what were the, the conversations like at training between the semi-final and the final because you got through it which is obviously the sign of a good team but you definitely didn't play to your full potential in the semi No definitely not and, and that was testament to tip like they they worked hard they they turned over ball and they got a couple of goal chances and you know I suppose we just kind of knew that like Cork are a brilliant team and that performance wasn't going to cut it um, on an all-Ireland final day so I suppose we just had to kind of take the positives from the game and know that we had to up our work rate and we had to work up our intensity and 
if we weren't if we weren't going to live with Cork. And I suppose when the men's ball was thrown in, we just focused on ourselves, focused on our game, and just brought an unbelievable want and hunger um, to win that ball back every time. And that's that's the way it worked out. Uh, there was a bit of controversy in the build-up to the game, and the Cork captain wasn't sure if um, they were going to get uh, her, if she was going to be allowed to play. The DRA eventually, at the last minute, um, in essentially allowed the uh, suspension to be set aside and, and dealt with afterwards because there's a, just a glitch in the Camogie rule book. Uh, how do you how do you block out that? Because I know everybody always says, "Oh, that's something to do with us." We've got to control the controllables. But at the same time, very important player in the opposition. They name 14. They have 16 in the parade. You know, as mind games go, it's uh, it's right up there. How do you block that out? And was it actually a successful... Were you successful at totally blocking it out? Yeah, like, we knew, obviously, that what was going on in the background. Um, but, like, we wanted to focus on ourselves and we wanted to focus on what we could bring. And, you know, if Orla got off or Doc got off, it didn't matter to us. Uh, what mattered to us was, you know, 15 players plus the 20 odd girls on the bench, what we could bring and what we could, uh, you know, attack the game with and we play to our strengths and that's what we focused on. And um, if she was playing, she was playing. If she wasn't, she wasn't. Um, and we couldn't control that. As you said, you can't, you know, control what you control. But we just focused on ourselves and, you know, we let management if they wanted to work on that, they they work on that. But as players, we blocked out the noise and we just focused on the game. What happens over the next little while then, Sarah? How does a, a homecoming work in, in the current circumstances? I don't know, to be honest. Um, Joel, I haven't heard any homecoming things yet. Um, I don't know what's going to happen, but look, we're just delighted. Like It's, it's hard to have a homecoming when you don't have the cup, but... Um, we're just unbelievably thrilled to be on the right side of things and you know all Ireland champions twice in three years is a brilliant achievement and I'm just so delighted and you know hugely proud of everyone the single girls out there and they died with their boots on and you know it's just testament to the work they've put in all year that we're on the right side of do, do, do you appreciate this a little bit more considering you've been in the winner's enclosure in the past and you know exactly how quickly these moments can flitter away? Yeah, like it's, yeah, we really took this um, uh, win in. Um, I suppose, you know, dressing room match for match when you lose an All-Ireland final is a horrible place to be and, and it's hard to pick yourself up from that. But you, like when you park that and you move on to the next year, you would do everything you possibly can to make sure you're not in one of those dressing rooms again um, because they're so hard. And like our dressing room la- yesterday was just electric, absolutely electric. And it's an unbelievable place to be in and you wouldn't want to be anywhere in the world only in that dressing room. Um, am I right in saying that you had to postpone your wedding twice last year and... Uh Eventually, it was ended up being one of the dates was around the time you got beaten in the All Ireland final. Uh, yeah, it was the week before. It. Um, ah, yeah. Look, it's unfortunately it's a situation we're in in the pandemic, but we'll get there eventually. Um, like you know, this winning this now does take the this thing out of postponing it that many times, but. Um, He's a very patient man. <laughs> 2020 was um, crap, basically. 2021 is what you're all about. I, this, this, that's the. It's going to be a, not a bad year, it turns out, Sarah. Yeah, yeah, it's a fantastic year. Like, um, but yeah, looking forward to the big day now. And um, yeah, just look, it, like it's every couple, a load of couples have gone through what we've gone through, and it's just what it, it is, what it is. And you just look, look forward to it. Um, and I can't wait to have the big day. Well, you can uh, bring the cup for the day (laughs) and and all the photographs as well it'll look good Uh, Sarah (laughs) congratulations enjoy the homecoming thanks a million thanks thanks a million Sarah Darwin there uh, captain of the successful Galway Camogie team which is now celebrating their second Ireland in three years 9.37 this morning here on OTBAM